KNAC.com, welcome. It's been a while since we did a phone interview, but it's worth it. We are here with one of the legends, the, one of the pioneers of death, doom, Chris Reifert. I hope I said your last name right. You did. You nailed it. Awesome. Drummer and vocalist for the band Autopsy from the Bay Area. These guys are legends, absolute legends for over 30 years, just grinding out some amazing albums. And we're talking the new album, their ninth album, Ashes, Organs, Blood, and Crips. That's a mouthful. I know. It's like a bad shopping list. <laughs> I'll take all of it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, tell us cool. about the new album, man. Are you stoked? This is coming out in October through Peaceville Records, who you've been with for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. We're super, super excited. I mean, it's coming out right before Halloween, so that's pretty appropriate. Yes. Um, yeah, we're, we're uh, really happy with the way it came out. Um, it, we got everything done that we wanted to. There was no shoot the woulda could is in there you know like how oh, he should have done this or that or not done this or that so um yeah it came out pretty much exactly how we were hoping it to which is good uh, doesn't always go that way and yeah we're still in peaceville it's insane we've been on them since 1988 is when we signed with them so it's a kind of a crazy amount of time and uh we're, we're all still tolerating each other <laughs> well obviously they treat you good man and, and you, you guys You've been putting out some quality products, so like no doubt, you, you know. Um, how long were you working on this album? Uh, not that long, because um, we we you know we're like hot off the heels of, of playing shows, just how we, we did last year. Um, it, it's probably not the ideal way to do it, honestly. You know, like mm -hmm. play you know play shows, and you're thinking about the set and how all the the songs go and all that. Then you have to break out of that mindset. And, switch gears and get into new new song mode you know writing and mm -hmm. rehearsing and all that and then you know right back into you know show mode right after that so it's kind of jarring for the brain you know but um you know shit you got to get things done but uh i've only like maybe a couple of months of of writing and rehearsing we we book studio time before we even had everything written which is kind of dumb Whoa. um that's twice in a row we've done that <laughs> did that with the last album too we, we just uh booked our time and said okay here's our deadline we can't fuck up so you know puts the puts the pressure on for sure but you know sometimes that's what it takes to, to get things done you know like deadlines make us get things done otherwise we probably wouldn't do jack shit yeah, um put a so pressure on yourself it's okay yeah yeah, oh, a lot of pressure. Because <laughs> once you get in the studio, it's, you know, time is money. Time is money. You're looking at the clock and you're looking at the calendar going, oh, God, yeah. we're on our last day and we have a lot to do still or, or what have you. So, but um, yeah, so it's super fast. You know, we didn't, mm -hmm. you know, let ideas marinate for six months or a year. We just, you know, threw them together and banged them out. And, you mm -hmm. know, a couple months later, it was done. Because you guys are just ba barely off the heels of a morbid tri triumphant, your release from last year. So was this yeah. like, was this material a lot like stuff left over from the last album? No, no, it was all <clears throat> brand new. Just uh, I, I can't pinpoint exactly when we started writing, but probably like you know beginning of the year. You know, we, we only had a couple months of, of writing. We never have leftovers because we're we're always in such a rush to get things done. We're we're mm -hmm. lucky to. To, to finish what we have <laughs> you know so there's never like leftover tracks or b-sides or or whatever it's like pressure's on to, to finish what we what we bid off you know mm -hmm. so uh yeah no it's all totally fresh brand new stuff nothing left from from anything so how, how was the writing process being that you like <clears throat> you're both the vocalist and the drummer like i'm a drummer myself and like of course i get my own ideas but like i can't write i can't play guitar for shit you know I, sh I could sure oh, cool. write, you know write some lyrics, but like, I mean, how does the songwriting process work with uh, with how how that you're a drummer and, and stuff? Oh well, uh, cool, you're a drummer. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. uh, kind of a crazy thing to do. Um, yeah. uh, for my part, uh, I, I also play guitar at home, you know. Yeah. Um, so we all we all go about it the same way. Uh, just whoever. Uh, we, we pretty much write music individually at home these days, you know, so let's just say like me or Eric or Danny or Greg, you know, whoever has a, a song they, they wrote at home. Usually normally we don't show it to anybody else in the band until it's finished. Sure. You know, we have a pretty good idea of when a song is, is 
ready to to unveil to the rest of the band so so let's just say one of us writes a song on guitar and finishes it and then we'll uh probably make a recording of it nowadays you can record stuff on your phone and share it stuff like that which is actually really convenient instead of uh you know recording it on a cassette recorder then you got to bring the cassette over to your buddy's house and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. uh, we can just like text and email songs and shit like that so um yeah so someone will write a song record it send it to everyone else to listen to and and then we get down to the rehearsal building and you know just start going at it you know hopefully everyone has listened to it and maybe even learned it a little bit Mm -hmm. but largely it's in the rehearsal room is is when it all comes together everyone just you know just hacks away and until we get it down and and that's pretty much it you know um it's whoever it's funny because whoever writes the song always tells everyone else oh it's really easy and it's not it's good it's because it's your song it's because it's easy it's like yeah you fucking wrote it so it's easy for you (laughs) you know so like you know we all do it you know eric will be like yeah my song's easy and you listen to it you're like what are you fucking talking about dude this is gonna drive me crazy you know (laughs) but but it all works out great in the end we're all guilty of that and then uh lyrics i i I've been doing those uh, myself lately, um, and those come last. I can I can finish sure. those like right before going into the studio because we don't deal with vocals until recording happens. We don't uh, I don't rehearse those. You know I don't I don't do vocals and drums until it's time to get something ready to to play live. So so that's easy. Uh, vocals are like zero pressure and a lot of fun. When did you start playing drums for one? Let me ask that. Um, like an actual well. I, it kind of goes back a long ways. I, I started playing. I probably shouldn't even count this, but I, my parents stuck me in marching band when I was like nine or ten. You know, like seventy-eight or seventy-nine or whatever it was. So, played bass, drum, and marching band. Um, it probably doesn't count, but I'm gonna say it anyways because it was my first, you know, exposure of like banging on an actual instrument. You learn and to keep tempo. You learn to keep tempo. <laughs> What's that? You learn to keep tempo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, that's a good point. I never even thought about that. But, yeah, if I couldn't do that, I would have been kicked out on the first day. But they, they actually let me stick with it and do a march and all that kind of shit. Um, and then an, an actual, like, drum kit. Uh, I, I'm, I was 13. Actually, I know for a fact I was 13. So it would have been 82. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's when uh, I started actually learning, like, a full kit and stuff. And uh, when did the idea hit you that, like, you know what, I want to sing as well? That was out of desperation because we we started Autopsy in 87, and we wanted to have a vocalist, you know. Um, Eric and I wanted that, and we just couldn't find anybody. There, there wasn't anyone. Mm. I mean, where we lived at the time, there was – we had buddies who were into metal and stuff, but not really many who were, were able to – to play in a band or something like that so we like we tried out one of our friends to try and be a vocalist and it went horribly it just wasn't working so it was just like well we're either going to be an instrumental band or we got to do this in-house so um I, eric and i actually originally were going to split the vocals mm-hmm. and uh he, he decided pretty early on he wanted to just focus on guitar so i, I sort of just got stuck with the job and and uh it wasn't intentional. It's just like, like I said, we're going to be an instrumental band, or we got to figure something out. So that's what we figured out. Very cool. I think I think you've uh, accomplished that very excellently. Like, uh, not very many drummers out there who do vocals. I mean, you got maybe what Don Henley, right? The Eagles, and you got like Phil Collins, and <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> I'm going to lump in with that sentence, Chris Reifert of Autopsy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the trio for you right there yeah it rocks man it rocks so tell us yeah. about the, the new album Ashes, Organs, Blood and Crips um, if we were to take a guess of the theme <laughs> but uh, tell us about the album man how are you feeling about it I feel great I mean it's kind of like what you'd expect from us you know more more, more of the same like we're not uh, reinventing ourselves and we're not recycling ourselves either it's kind of like another autopsy record pretty much like I mean I, I just got the new uh cannibal corpse yesterday or day before oh, and it's kind of like that like you know you, you know, know what you're gonna get, gonna get. Yeah. You, you don't 
you don't know what all the riffs are going to be, but you know what you're going to get. You don't know what all the lyrics are going to be, but you know what you're going to get. It's just like that. Like <clears throat> I tell everyone, and I'll tell you the same thing. If you did not like us before, you will still not like us. If you liked us before, you probably still will. Uh, it's that simple, you know. It's it's more uh, blood and gore and guts and horror and you know all that kind of fun stuff. And, uh, and I'm trying to find the artist's name, but uh, it looks like you've stuck with the same artist for the cover artwork, right? Oh yeah, West Ben Scudder. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. It's great stuff, great stuff, real detailed stuff. Like, how who was that uh, a collaboration idea, or he just like kind of like, okay, this is the album, this is the title, like, have at it. Um, I, we gave him the the title, and he just pretty much had at it. Honestly, you know, we, um, he's pretty good about that. We don't normally have to tell him too much you know we might say you know like oh add add a little bit of blood here or add a something here or don't do that dude you know we don't tell him much though you know and a lot of the times we'll we'll tell him things and he'll ignore it or he'll be like no i'm not going to do that <laughs> or or whatever you know he'll he'll listen to us but he doesn't take a whole lot of it to heart unless we really really insist on something but we don't normally have to very much he's just good at at just going for it you know i mean if it was too much of a struggle we wouldn't have worked with him this many times but he's he's super fun to work with and easy and it's exciting seeing it come together he'll send us like progress and stuff so we can we can see it as it goes along and if, if there's something we don't like we can we can say it unlike the old days you know and a lot of the time you'd get your copies of the album in, in the mail and be like, Oh, here's our cover. <laughs> they didn't, you know, there was no, uh, oh, emails or, or sneak previews or anything like that. You're just like, here it is. Oh, so yeah, it's, no. it's nice to see things, you know, come along uh, step by step nowadays. Yeah. And, uh, what, what, do you recall what was the first album that, had, that uh, <clears throat> he did the cover art for was? Uh, the first one he did for us was macabre eternal. That was our, our, uh, first, full-length album after our uh, 15 years slumber mm -hmm. also coming back to like the history of it all apparently 13 years ago you guys released the tomb within indeed yeah how if you can flash back to like the early days of your records and stuff like that what how how, how would you compare your mindset then to it is now uh i mean mindset is pretty much the same you know we just want to like play death metal you know and uh make it sound like like uh our own sound if that's possible um the only thing that's different is you know in the earlier days we were you know we didn't have uh as many responsibilities <laughs> you know so we we're kind of like we just do whatever the fuck we wanted for the most part you know we you know um so you know time has marched on and stuff like that so we're you know we actually have actually have like responsible home lives and stuff like that i hate to burst anyone's bubble no. but um but other, i mean otherwise we like when we get in the rehearsal room we, we think the same way mm -hmm. you know we don't we're not thinking about you know uh responsibilities or whatever we're just like hey let's get the song down and make it sound sick and get ready for the show or this record or what have you so mm -hmm. Um, that's that's what's cool about it is we feel the same way you know if something was Good. off or compromised or we didn't feel as enthusiastic we just wouldn't do it you know there'd be there'd be no point so okay. we're somehow oddly weirdly still excited to play this stuff I have no idea why well I mean I would think that the the rabid fans that are still loyal and love your sound are one of the reasons because I mean we we're definitely like grateful that you guys are still around. It's definitely you definitely come back from the hiatus and you know still putting out great records, which is awesome because, like you mentioned, it's like with Autopsy, you, you mentioned Cannibal Corpse. It's like you know what you're getting. But, you know, there's of course there's been bands where like they quote unquote experiment, they take it a different direction. It's like you know hit and miss, but I love that. With yeah, Autopsy. we're not we're not uh we're not gonna go dream theater on you. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, uh, yeah, no, I pre we appreciate that people like our stuff because <clears throat> as, as fun as it is to play and all that, I mean, if there was no one, you know, you can say, oh, I don't give a fuck if anyone likes our stuff, which, you, you know, like, there might be a little truth in that, but not that much because if no one was interested and no one was listening, I can't see us doing it just 
as a time killer or like a hobby or whatever you know we right. we like that people want to hear it and actually like see us on stage and stuff like that it just makes it worthwhile and the you know interaction with people and stuff like that it's just you know it makes the makes the circle complete otherwise there'd mm-hmm. honestly be no point in doing it you know we'd probably get bored and think of something else to do very true very true and uh coming up also you guys will be part of the mass destruction fest happening in november are you stoked for that oh yeah yeah that's gonna be cool man i mean the the lineup is crazy you know i mean shit we're playing not necessarily on the same days you know or whatever but i mean like fucking coven is gonna be there and pagan altar and immolation and yeah. oh man it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun uh we're, we're, we're very excited about that we've actually never played atlanta before either so it'll be uh something oh, wow. different um yeah it's gonna be cool we're, we're uh we're pretty excited it's coming up pretty soon i happen to be there last year and uh yeah the mass destruction festival that whole area is like a, a great crowd man so i'm sure you guys oh cool gonna, you guys are just gonna pop off so nice cool. yeah yeah we're stoked yeah. very cool uh does it feel good to be back on stage after like the bullshit of like I hate to mention it by name, but you know the whole lockdown and everything that was going on. I mean, oh yeah, you can mention it. It happened, you know. Um, yeah, it's great. You know, I mean, the the, the first time back was kind of weird, and that was actually mm-hmm. you're out of LA, aren't you? I'm in LA, yes. Yeah, that was our first one back. Oh, cool. For um, oh, I think it was California Death Fest. Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, what's it called? Seventeen Twenty, I think. Yeah. The club. Yeah, um, yeah. that was our first one back after all that stuff and it it was weird you know it was like no one really knew how to act or if it was okay to be all crammed in a building right. so it was kind of like uh is this something we should be doing but you know of course we did it you know and everything turned out cool um so and after and after that that was kind of like the icebreaker mm-hmm. and then after that it was just kind of like back to back to it you know we didn't really think about it anymore after that one you know we're like okay we did it we survived everything was fine <laughs> nothing horrible happened let's all right let's keep rocking you know simple as that all right um let's let's, let's kind of dive into more of that like as far as like the pandemic and lockdown like what was your mindset what was going on with you how were you keeping yourself busy um it's just same as anyone else just kind of every i, I felt like like a lot of people, you know, like just riding the hamster wheel, like every day was the same, you know, there was nothing like musically, obviously nothing happened, you know? So like my daily life was just like one day after another, you know, nothing to separate one day from the other, you know, just kind of riding it out. But, but, uh, you know, unfortunately musically we couldn't do anything. No one could, you know, on basically planet earth. So people were doing things, trying to be creative, like do, you know, live streams and stuff like that. We didn't do anything like that, but, but, uh, it's just kind of like a, a blank, a blank chunk of time that we just had to wait to be over. So, mm-hmm. but I, you know, most musicians and bands have the same story, just like, well, nothing mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> so there's not really much to report about that. Just kind of waiting for it to be over. Yeah. Did explore a lot of like back catalogs. Well, did really go down of like many rabbit holes of like classic music, like classic rock, classic metal, like bands I've never heard of, or just catching up on old albums. Was, was there anything that you were uh, listening to for the first time or that you were constantly on uh, having on repeat? Uh, oh man, that uh, same as same as any point in my life, you know, from when I was a kid till now, always listening to stuff as much as possible. I mean, there's not a day that goes by where I don't listen to at least a couple of albums. Just uh, just something I need, you know. So yeah, I was listening to just whatever I could, you know, just just anything, everything. I've got a, a pretty sick record collection, so yeah. I, I never get bored. You know, there's always yeah. something to listen to and. And uh, I still love getting new releases. You know that that's always great. Mm-hmm. Like this year has been great, man. I got the new Cannibal. I got the new Raven. Got the new Hoiva. Got the new Overkill. New Alice Cooper. You know, fucking. Uh, that just keeps things uh, exciting. And then revisiting old favorites. You know, never gets old. Incantation put out a, a good one too. Oh, I, yeah. I actually forgot to mention that one. That one's sitting right in front of me on vinyl too. I got that one also. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna find myself a record player and maybe hopefully some space. I mean, I want to start my, myself a little record connection collection too, man. Because I know that the quality of vinyl, man, it's doesn't beat anything like that. 
oh yeah it's great but you know there's there's no wrong way to listen to music whatever whatever works for you it works very true very true very true we are here talking with chris reifert of autopsy the new album ashes organs blood and crypts through peaceville records comes out october 27th now as far as the team behind you on this one uh this is greg's second album with you correct yeah it is and uh but he's kind of been with you for a minute right i guess yeah, we got him in the band in 2021, so it's been it's been two years now. So he's officially, as of last year, we we uh, we didn't call him the new guy anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Greg's Greg's awesome, man. We've we've known him for for some years before mm-hmm. him joining the band. We would like see him in the halls in our rehearsal building because he he's got a room uh, right across the hall from us. We just like see him around, oh, and, and then. Uh, he, he recorded one of my other bands, Violation Wound, um, in his studio because he's a recording engineer by trade. You know, he's yeah. got his own studio and all that. So, uh, you know, we had we had some uh, some back history with him before he got in the band. So he wasn't like a stranger or anything like that. It was uh, a it was a good uh, comfortable fit. Oh, that's very cool. Very cool. Did uh, he also help with like some of the behind the scenes, like uh, engineering with the new album? He did um, on this one. He didn't on the last one. But uh, he did. We went to we tried a new studio out this time, um, just to try something new because we've been going to the same same uh, place and same engineer for for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And we just I don't know, just we're like let's try something different just to see what what could happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went to this place in Oakland called uh, Shark Bite that uh, Greg told us about, and it was it was it was super cool. I mean they had. We worked with this guy named Scott Evans, who um, engineers there, but Greg also helped. Um, and that was for like the rhythm tracks, like drums and you know rhythm guitars and all that stuff. And then uh, we we moved over to Greg's studio, which is called Earhammer, to do like vocals and guitar solos, and he, he mixed it there and stuff. So so uh, we've we've actually never done things like that before. We've always just had an engineer and did everything in the same place, all in one quick chunk you know and it was kind of cool this time it felt a little more luxurious you know a little a little more relaxed yeah. being able to uh finish things up over at greg's place because we could sort of uh um just have a little more a little more wiggle room you know yeah. um not be quite as rushed mm-hmm. so you're like your own boss a little bit and kind of it's more in your hands you're more under control exactly yeah a little bit yeah i mean he still had to you know schedule schedule it around his own you know um appointments and stuff because he's he's a busy guy you know he's pretty uh pretty in demand for his recording studio but but uh having said that you know we didn't need like huge chunks of time so he'd just be like yeah i'll come by for a couple hours this evening or whatever yeah it worked out great very cool very cool um Take us back to like the mid to late eighties when you know you autopsy was just about to like you know <clears throat> get put out there, and you're like in the Bay Area, kind of in your in your in your best words, like what was the scene like growing up? Like you had mentioned, like you couldn't really find many vocalists out there. I guess the scene, death metal as a whole, like it was just kind of starting to break out. Like what was going on over there? Um, it it was great over here, you know, like, I mean, I grew up pretty, pretty close to, to like, I mean, everything was like a, a, you know, a BART train away from, from going to, um, like Berkeley, Oakland, San Francisco, you know, I would, starting when I was like 14, you know, my mom would let me just go out with my buddies and take the train out to San Francisco or whatever. And she was very trusting, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was pretty young for that shit, but you know, just go out to to uh, see. Sh- I mean, there was, you know, when I was a young teenager, way back when, there was always killer shows. I mean, I go see like Slayer and Exodus for like five bucks. Nice. You know, at like a little club Ruthie's in, or um, I mean, you know, just I, I could go on and on about about those days. You yeah. know, but um, death metal was kind of like a, a slow a slow burn you know at first it was very very uh wildly unpopular and uncool <laughs> it took a long time because like heavy metal and thrash were were super popular 
you know, in an underground sense, of course, sure. not like, like it is now, but, but when death metal first started coming around, it was like kind of for losers, you know, like yeah. <laughs> when, uh, yeah. Uh, like when I first joined death over here, it was like, yeah, I was going to mention it, but yeah. Yeah. It was, it was uncool, man. I had friends that were, that didn't get it, you know, like, why would you do this? You know, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Or, you know, like, Oh, the can't understand the lyrics and you're not singing about, politics and thrashing in the pit and banging your head or whatever people didn't understand you know so eventually you know the joke was on them you know right. but yeah. but uh there was kind of a lot of uh, elitism in the the like thrash community uh-huh. you know and it, it was just a lot of it was, it was just kind of weird you know like when like uh for example like if there was a mixed bill of like metal and punk bands there was a lot of animosity between the two crowds. You know, they didn't always see eye to eye and, you know, there could be fights or just shit talking or whatever. And, but it was all part of the process that had to happen. And now, you know, any band could play with any band and it's, it's probably going to be cool. You know, people aren't going to fight over a musical style, which when you think about it is so fucking ridiculous. (laughs) I always like both, you know, if I could go see, Possessed and DRI on the same bill, which I did back then. It was great. I'm like, fuck yeah, this is a win-win for me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. And then eventually, everyone warmed up to the idea that metal and hardcore bands can share a bill. And turns out, death metal is pretty cool after all. <laughs> oh yeah, man. That's part you of know? Like, you know, and, like like the whole outcast feel, or like it's like what, what, what? It's like, well, that just drives you to, you know, follow it more. You know, to like be in. Oh, element. dude. Yeah exactly that mm-hmm. that was fuel for the fire for us you know yeah, we're right. like oh you think this sucks cool <laughs> <laughs> this makes us want to do it even more fuck you you know yeah and you and you you mentioned it before um you played an, an intricate part you uh on the first record scream bloody gore with death and uh that's like the, the whole shaping of death metal early on so uh you know thanks for that Honestly, thank you for that. Oh, yeah, I, I was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, yeah. I, I wore my uh, Scream Bloody Gore shirt too, just for this interview because I was like, you know, I usually do that like when I'm interviewing somebody. It's like, let me let me get a shirt. Something has to be relevant here. <laughs> oh, nice, very cool. Get in the get in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're almost out of time, man. And uh, if you have a couple more minutes, I just wanted to uh, just tell us about Chuck. Your 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 time with him. Like, how was he like? Oh, it was. Um, first of all, I'm fine on time. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm fine on time, man. I'm I'm good. Um, it was cool. I, you know, my time in the band was was probably unique compared to other people that were in the band after me because, you know, we we were like teenagers. You know, I was 17, he was 19. You know, and we we're just kind of like getting it off the ground in, in the sense of like getting on a record label and making an album. So everything was new, mm-hmm. you know, um, and there wasn't a lot of, of pressure, you know, with like sort of like business and labels. We were just like, Oh my God, we got a record deal. We can make a record. This is great. Mm-hmm. You know? So and, and my time in the band wasn't that long either. It was like a year, year and a half, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, maybe year and a half tops, yes. you know? And a lot of it was, was, on hold waiting for something to happen you know um like for example when i when i went to florida for the summer when we thought we were going to record the album there was a a couple of months where we just didn't have anything to do because i didn't have a drum kit my my mom had it sent my drum sent to florida from california on a greyhound bus because that's what she could afford (laughs) so it took like a long time so we just had a couple of months of just being teenage idiots you know just wasting time and doing dumbass shit to you know to laugh you know and have a, a good time and just you know fucking goof off and drink cheap beer which i don't know how we bought it because we were underage but somehow it happened quite a bit um just dumb shit you know sure, um yeah. Yeah. yeah and then uh you know we finally got to make the album and yeah that was crazy too because the label sent two teenagers to to la 
with no supervision or nothing. They're just like, here, fly to LA and we'll get you a hotel and you make this record and no one's going to look after you. We're like, cool. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Let us loose in the fucking belly of the beast, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was fun. And then after that, we didn't, we didn't do anything again because we were, we were hoping to, to fill out the lineup and play shows and that never happened. And then he ended up moving back to Florida and yeah. th- that closed my, my chapter in the, in the band's history. Um, but, but he was great. You know, we were, we were best friends back then. It was just mm-hmm. him and I, we couldn't find band members if our, our lives depended on it. It just wasn't, it sounds ridiculous now, but we just couldn't find anyone. Yeah. You know, death metal was not cool, not popular. A lot of people didn't know what it was. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, and now they come. But yeah, so we we're everywhere. Yeah, so like it was okay. we were it was us against the world. You know, yeah. so we got to be like really tight friends, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was. That's a lot of what I remember is just like the hanging out. You know, because mm-hmm. um, we we made the demo and we made the record. And that was kind of it, you know, other than that, just like we'd listen to albums, and just like laugh about dumb shit. That's a lot of that is what I remember, just the kind of like hanging out and just passing time, having fun. Very cool. And from death gave way to autopsy. Sick drummer right here, Chris Reifert, talking about the new album, Ashes, Organs, Blood and Crips, out <clears throat> October 27th with Peaceville Records. Drummer to drummer, man. I always like talking to drummers because I want to hear what you're playing. Tell us about your kit. Uh, my kit is pretty broken down. It's a, uh, it's a um, Premier, oh, uh, Premier Cabria, which is a, uh, it's a, it's a low end Premier kit, but there's no bad Premier drums, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it was probably like 20 plus years ago. I, I went through this Keith Moon obsession. You know, he's one of my favorite drummers. You know, my yeah. like top two. Yeah, um, he's fucking crazy. You know, I, um, so I, I just like when he always played premier drums. I'm like, I need to get premier drums, mm-hmm. and no one, no one had them in any music stores. Everyone was like, here, buy these DWs. I'm like, I don't want fucking DWs or whatever you got on your floor. No, mm-hmm. so it was just crazy quest, and I finally went to this music store in up in Sacramento, about an hour drive north from here. And they were willing to order me a, a kit. You could only get it from England. So I ordered this premier kit, and it had to come by boat. But it took six months to show up, so I had to wait a long time for it. Um, and then it finally got here. This was probably like uh, maybe 2000. I'm not sure exactly when I got it, but it was a long time ago. But um, I haven't fixed or repaired or done anything with it since I got it. So it's a it's a fucking wreck right. but yeah. uh it's still it's still intact i don't fix things i don't the only thing i ever mm-hmm. do is replace symbols when they break sometimes <laughs> i've got two broken ones right now that sound terrible um i'm not a good gear person i just kind of like ignore shit as long as it's functional but mm-hmm. but i still love that kit man it's cool it's uh I got four rack toms, two kicks, snare, and a floor, and uh, I still love it. It's still great. Yeah, like a fine wine, man. Like you know, drums, they they uh, age well. <laughs> they yeah, as long as you don't destroy them. I have a yeah. a, a, a Tama Rockstar kit that I kind of oh. did destroy. Nice. The kick drum shells are broken for me, like jumping on them and oh. <laughs> stuff, stuff like that. And then in the abscess days, we would just. Mm-hmm. get drunk and like throw drums at each other in the rehearsal room it was a, it was, it was crazy so, <laughs> so <laughs> don't trust me with your equipment that's the moral of the story to your point um there are no bad drum sets only bad drummers <laughs> oh yeah well uh, there are some bad drum sets out there but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what do you play anyways uh i also play a tama rockstar at the moment Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Fucking, I missed that set, man. The drums were huge on it. And uh, I had like all these extra toms and stuff like that. It's yeah. in boxes in the corner of our room. And I always say, someday I'll break it out and try and set it up again. But we'll, yeah. we'll see. But yeah, Thomas are great, man. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, my, I still have my first original kick from back in the 90s. It was a Thomas Swing Star also. And, oh, um, yeah. I remember the, the Swing Star because that's uh, uh, the Rockstar actually replaced that kit. They phased out the Swing Star. Mm hmm. 
and uh, I, I should bring that, that one out of storage too, man, and just I don't know, just give it some TLC and see how it sounds. But yeah, yeah the bump on it a couple times, see what it does. Yeah, um, I have like three rack toms, two floor toms, two kick drums. I rarely use all that because it's for one, it's a lot to lug around, and uh, at the moment, I'm not really playing in any like death or heavy band, so it's just I. I play just usually two rack toms two floor toms the kick drum i have a double kick pedal and i'm good you know <clears throat> cool cool yeah right. drums are horrible to, to to move around man i try not to ever take mine anywhere because mm -hmm. just you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it, man. breaking them down setting them up moving around it's like an epic journey yeah and i have a uh, zildjian cymbals i have more than i can use right now I, i've been on a <clears throat> excuse me I've been on a buying frenzy of a uh, of uh, catching the Zeke customs that were discontinued. So anytime I see them, I just pick them up. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah, they're like they're fucking bright and they cut through and you know best really good for like a metal sound, you know. So I love it. Yeah, yeah, nice, hell yeah. But <clears throat> time uh, is not on our side, my friend. Chris, it's been <laughs> an absolute pleasure to talk to you, man. Uh, and again, drummer to drummer, man, I appreciate your time. Autopsy. The new record, <clears throat> Ashes, Organs, Blood, and Crips, out through Peaceville, October 27th. Make sure you pick that up. I'll put uh, the pre-sale and all the info in the description of this video. And um, any last words that you want to just tell your fans about the new album or anything you uh, up? Yeah, just check it out. See what you think. Um, you know, thanks a lot for supporting our racket for, for all these years. Uh, definitely, you know, keep us going. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Very cool. Cheers, uh, hails and horns to the rest of the autopsy camp, and uh, hopefully I'll see you when you come back to L.A. Yep, I'm sure we'll be back someday. Right on, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Cheers. Right on. Have a good birthday. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.